We're living in a metagame dominated by crazy combos and punish games. Steve Up Tilt, Mario Up Air, Kazuya, anything. Advantage state has become such an important asset to a player that no one really focuses on neutral anymore. Well, no one except Chris Waddy Boston. The old Virginian has been a prominent player since Brawl and has made a name for himself off an unorthodox playstyle. But just what does he do to excel in this area? How does his game plan differ between characters? And what weaknesses come with being a specialist? It's natural for players to become experts in certain areas. Void and Esam are amazing labbers, Fatality has revolutionized Falcon Disadvantage, and MKLeo has redefined what good spacing is, referred to my last analysis on that. All the while, Wadi has flown under the radar and optimized Smash at the most basic level, fundamentals. It's a term that gets tossed around, and there are a million different ways to interpret it, However, I would argue fundamentals are a player's understanding of how Smash is played and applying that knowledge into four main pillars. Movement, spacing, punishing, and combos. Coming full circle, Wadi's fighting game experience has made him a master of these four basic pillars. Starting with movement, which is an unorthodox part of his game, notice how he rarely dash dances, and his movements are quick and simple. Some might see this as a weakness, but in actuality, it's one of his strongest points. Wadi is a very calculating player, and doesn't commit to options unless he sees inherent value. These dash shields are great at closing the gap, and he really likes these landing neutral specials with Rob and Mewtwo, not only to reposition, but also to condition and scout for options. This is inherently connected with his spacing. Wadi plays as if he has a safety bubble surrounding his character, keeping anyone and everyone out of that space, and the moment that space is encroached or breached is when he acts. This disable anticipating the approach was a great mix-up, and his cast of characters all have projectiles to force his opponent's hand at aggressive options. His punishes and combos are also a weird one. This is another area you might think he struggles, but again, it's actually pretty efficient. Instead of going for crazy combos, Wadi relies on simple bread and butters that force his opponents into vulnerable positions. This dashed attack out of the laser acts as a mini frame trap, and again, pushes Quick into a corner, pressuring with down tilts while still maintaining his burst range. After landing this neutral air, he dashes towards Mars to cut off this landing area, which ultimately forces a jump. He recognizes Sky J's shield habit here, and with no true combo to be had, mixes him for an astonishing 100% right off the bat, a very rare sequence at top level play. These confusions on platforms are pinnacle Mewtwo pressure, and resetting his advantage state every time forces Sky J into an extra level of neutral that takes time to comprehend. Sky J has more than enough time to jump out to avoid the forward air, but Wadi is already in his head, and he burns him for it. His recoveries are also worthy of praise. Most players try and recover the ledge as soon as possible, but Wadi opts to stall as much as he can until the coast is clear. Rob and Mewtwo are especially great at this. This up B stalling is amazing, especially since he can shark with up airs. And Mewtwo's huge double jump, along with confusion, allows him to disregard most traps. I love his use of Shadow Ball and Laser to cut off any edge guard attempts. Again, there isn't anything particularly flashy going on, it's just phenomenal decision making. And he's really good at reacting whenever someone does try to meet him off stage. Rely on reactions and decision making, and the result is a remarkable disadvantage state. Wadi has redefined what it means to have good fundies. Rather than putting the burden on his fingers, he allows his mind to do the heavy lifting, constantly putting himself in the right position at the right time. And since he opts for a simpler combo and advantage state, his conversion rate and stamina are really high, vital components for any deep bracket run. This barebone style of play also allows his skill set to translate to virtually any character. Yes, the combos in neutral are different, but they're all founded on the same building blocks. 
His rod tends to focus on option coverage. This laser to bait out the air dodge is great and immediately follows up with a forward air to push advantage. He opts to play a more read and react style with Mewtwo. Notice these early game shadow balls to condition and zone out before they transition into a potent ledge trapping tool. There are a few points for optimization. Wadi isn't that consistent with his tap shield cancels. These were both miss inputs, and cleaning this up can make his Mewtwo faster and more elusive. But since he doesn't rely on excessive movement to win, I'm not too worried about this inconsistency. His Ice Climbers are a bit of a curveball, mainly because this is the most fundus based version of the character I have ever seen. But again, Wadi makes his own style for the climbers. He loves these burst options, forcing some kind of reaction, and while simple, Icy's basic combo game still yields a ton of damage, way more than the true combos he goes for with Robin Mewtwo. Again, there's a lot of room for improvement. Wadi seems to dabble in a select few basic desyncs, but for a secondary character, the climbers fit him like a glove. This part is my speculation, but aside from basic matchup knowledge, Wadi has developed a solid three-pronged attack. Icy's for burst options and damage, Mewtwo for neutral and ledge trapping, and Rob for comfort and option coverage. And the interesting part is as he gets more experience, the more refined his counter picks will become. Since they all have significantly different playstyles, the chances that a player can get through all three characters is not that high. Chris's dominance in neutral cannot be understated, and is incredibly impressive to not only become so proficient, but also do so with three different characters. However, there are a few areas of improvement. And to me, the struggle isn't what Wadi brings to the table, rather it's the potential value he leaves there, most namely his combos and edge guarding. He shows flashes of excellence, this Shadow Ball conversion was textbook, but I'd like to see him go for more of his combo starters. This dash attack should have been a down tilt, and he has moments of going for hard callouts. This up smash was pretty greedy and essentially opened the door for Ned to make a comeback. Admittedly, optimizing combo games for three different characters is not practical, and other than Mewtwo, Rob and Ices aren't bleeding massive value that is consistent with his playstyle. With that being said, I think mastering at least one high damage combo with each character could be huge for his early game. His confident ledge trapping can also be a double-edged sword, foregoing quite a few edge guards he could easily capitalize on. Again, ledge trapping is definitely his character's strong suit, and the amount of value he generates there is exceptional. But he misses enough opportunities that the value he loses is significant. Vendetta's far off stage, and a back air could have been really nice here, or at least force out an earlier focus attack. I like the idea with the forward air, but a switch in moves could have made the difference. This is an example of leaving food on the table. It ultimately ends in a ledge trap, but Quick is asking to get Shadow Balled right here. Fatality miss inputs here and falls off stage, and a neutral air would have easily ended the stock, but instead Wadi opts for stage positioning. Again, a fine decision in a vacuum, but a nair is a death sentence for a recovering falcon. And because of this inconsistency, his opponents get much more comfortable off stage. Quick is not worried about dying here, and doesn't even air dodge when he gets close to ledge. Again, this is more specific to Mewtwo since he's the best edge guarder out of his characters, but similar concepts can be applied to Rob and Ices. There's an opportunity to Z drop the gyro past the ledge to force a low recovery, but he drops it on stage and this gives Quick an opening for a reversal. Here he does a good job at winning advantage, and again, the gyro is a fine option, but given how often Quick has stalled with bombs, I think a forward air would have been really safe to go for. What's more, he commits way too hard for a down air read and Quick makes him pay. Wadi is difficult to rate as a player, mostly because he hasn't gone to as many tournaments in 2022. There are times when he underperforms, but he also shows flashes of the top 20 player he used to be. And if my input means anything, I do think his upside potential is really high as long as he sticks with this set of characters. If he hones his craft and labs out a couple optimal combos for each character, his long-term growth as a player can be tremendous, especially seeing how good he is now. I think the vast majority of the times he loses is due to growing pains of getting used to his character selection, and will become more consistent given time. But as of right now, I would rate Wadi as a top 100 player in the world, with potential to crack the top 50.
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. Special thank you to VG Bootcamp for providing the VODs for the analysis. Go check them out if you are looking for some top-level tournament gameplay. Links to their channel, along with the music used, are in the description. If there's a player you'd like to see an analysis on, let me know in a comment below. That's all I have for now, and I will see you all next time. Oh, wait there? Oh my god. <laughs>